So here we are on Love Speaks Love. I am Denise Chadwick, the host of Love Speaks Love, and I have two awesome guests with me today. I have Hillis Pugh and Lou Martin. Welcome, both of you. Thank you, Denise. Hello, Denise. Thank you for having me on today. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Um, and it was interesting because Hillis, you reached out to a little while ago and, and asked if you, if you could be on. And I've been getting, I've been getting a bit of a nudge to have more collaborations on this. And I don't know if it's something about all the twos with 2022 and two to me is a lot about collaboration and, you know, coming together. Um, and so when I was, when I was feeling into this and I was going to ask you, Lou kept popping into, into my head. So I followed that intuition and asked Lou as well. Lou, I met in Glastonbury at the Voices of the Light Tribe event that was um, hosted by Amrita Marquisadek. Um, so I met, I met Lou in person, which is a bit of a rarity these days with our mm. online relationships. And Hillis, I remember when I saw you chatting to Todd Medina um, and I got quite a big, uh, I don't know if you remember me, me speaking this, but I saw this like quartz, almost like a crown in your- I remember. And, and down the spine. And I still have the uh, drawings that you sent me. I look at them uh, at least once a month. Awesome. But yes, uh, thank you for that. <laughs> You are very welcome. Um, now, I'm just gonna share to a couple of places, just bear with me. Um, this is the tedious bit about the Facebook Lives. Share it to Love Speaks Love and if anybody watching feels to share it at any point, that would be most appreciated. Um, okay. Share it to Solitude. Um, I wish I could organize all my groups. <laughs> I know when you're on Facebook and you have like six groups, I'm like, okay, what? Yeah. What's the name again? Who can I post to? Where can I not do? Where am I breaking rules? So, oh. Am I allowed to do this in this group? <laughs> or is it that group? Yeah, no, I totally get it. Yeah, so I end up like I'm in all these groups, but I hardly, um, there it is. There we go. Okay. <sighs> so. What I will do at this point, I normally start Love Speaks Love with a little, um, a little heart to heart connect and just bringing our awareness to our heart space. So if you're in a position to do so, I just invite you to close your eyes if you wish to, but eyes open or closed, if you can bring your awareness to your heart space in the center of your chest. And take a few deep breaths, breathing love into your beautiful heart. And breathing out anything of the day so far or the day ahead, anything that might be preventing you from being in this now moment. And making any sounds that you wish on your release. And as you breathe love into your beautiful heart, knowing that that love is spreading to every cell of your body, going deep into the DNA. <sighs> and extending our heart awareness out now to the heart of Gaia. Connecting with the new earth templates and the crystalline diamond heart of Gaia and you may feel yourself enveloped in the love of Gaia. You may feel Gaia's love entering your body through your feet, through your base chakra, through your hands, through your heart 
and feeling Gaia's love for all of us and her deep gratitude for all that we are and all that we do. And extending that heart awareness out now to the heart of the sun. Feeling those beautiful solar energies moving into your body, into your heart, into your solar plexus, into every cell. And feeling the love from the solar logos. and extending that heart awareness out to the heart of Source Creator and feeling the love from Source moving into your body, into your heart, into your crown and feeling all of our hearts together, beating together as one in one unified field of love. And I often get this visual at the end of this of a beautiful golden web of light all over the planet. Connecting all of us here on the call live, on the replay and on YouTube. And feeling the expansion in your heart. Ah, so when we're ready, opening our eyes if they're closed. Maybe just having a sip of water. Beautiful, thank you. Thanks, Denise. So, Lou, I'll start with you. You have been on this journey for a good while, since 1987, since the Harmonic Convergence. Um, and I know you do a lot of channeling, but just as a kind of broader introduction to who you are and, and what you're doing here on the planet, I'd love to hear a little bit about how your journey started and how you came to be doing what you're doing. Sure, a pleasure. Uh, one more time. Uh, yeah, great to be here with you both. Um, I, I really feel the the love, the compassion, and uh, the the humility in in service. Uh, all of us here. Um, so um, yeah, so August of nineteen eighty seven, uh, before uh, Hillis was a gleam in his father's eye, uh, or yeah, something like that, right? Uh, no, you were ten. You were eleven. Okay. Um, so anyway, when you were young man, 97, I, I think I was 87. almost 20, 87. Oh, 87. Oh, yeah. yeah. 87. I was on like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, see, in the way back machine. Anyway, um, so uh, I was working in a spiritual bookshop uh, and I've been working in bookstores for most of my 20s uh, after I left college just to study and read and feed my head. And uh, so it was a spiritual bookstore and I started reading about near-death experiences and Ram Dass and um, the Dalai Lama and how as the Dalai Lamas reincarnate, they uh, are able to identify their, uh, their possessions from previous lifetimes, they're tested and things like this. And all this began to <clears throat> open my mind. And um, I've been carrying this grief. My dad died when I was 17. And I hadn't really found any uh, way to deal with that grief uh, in my 20s. And uh, so anyway, long story short, the convergence came around and somewhere before or after that time, I started meditating and uh, I met a friend and he gave me a piece of quartz crystal and he said, there's this thing called Kundalini energy. And if you meditate with a piece of quartz crystal, it might open up. And the very first time I did that, I had a Kundalini awakening that put me in an altered state for the next seven days. And so orgasmic, ecstatic, all chakras open, uh, the full, the full deal, and that was a life changer. And so, somewhere before or after the convergence that happened, and the convergence for me was the meeting of um, Lazarus, 
who is a spirit guide that channels through a man named Jack Purcell. And that was my first experience of encountering a channel uh, in person. And um, uh, I've been studying with Lazarus for the last 35 years as well. So uh, living in LA at the time, uh, I've said it, uh, it was kind of a renaissance for spirituality. I study with Reverend Michael Beckwith at the Agape Church in the practitioner program there uh, off and on for 10 years. And um, was in the choir for a year with Ricky Byers, which was a joy. And um, just learned to channel, opened to channel, started started doing that work. Uh, Drunvalo Melchizedek, Deepak Chopra, other great teachers, got to meet them and, and learn from them, etc. cetera. So um, yeah, that's, that's how it all began. And I've really never looked back. The message that Lazarus gave us on the convergence is they said, uh, the next 25 years are going to be this accelerated time of spiritual awakening for the light workers, so that we could be prepared when the energy started to shift on the planet for the, all of humanity, we'd be ready to, uh, to help. And I'm sure we all know this is certainly that time. And so it's very, it's very wonderful to be here with you both. Uh, you know, we've all gone through, um, had to move heaven and earth. Uh, to be on this path and to learn our lessons and to be of service to, excuse me, to humanity, etc. So it's a, it's a great privilege to be here and share, share this time with you. Thank you, Lou. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's probably a very compressed version of, <laughs> of your time. It's only, it's only 35 years, you know. <laughs> so over to you, Hillis. How, how did yours... Um, come about you know it's interesting um it was somewhat conventional and then not conventional at the same time because i started out uh in the energy of gratitude and expressing gratitude and learning about gratitude and the, and the true meaning of gratitude really and offering my thanks to friends and family in a particular uh, time in my life so things weren't the best and it was in that catalyst of energy where I began my journey and studied you know the masters uh, or teachers at the time like uh, Dr. Michael Beckwith, uh, Neil Donald Walsh, Greg Brad and uh, all those those people reading the books and books and books and more books <laughs> uh, you know Dr. Bruce Lipton about the body now, all these, all these teachers, so like, I, I just went through this period of just like wanting to know everything. And as I moved through that energy, I happened upon the, the wanting to know more about the law of attraction through Esther Hicks, you know, or Abraham Hicks, or people know how I ask. And then as I learned through that, understanding, you know, not just so long ago, there's a symbiotic relationship between gratitude and what I now uh, know is the law of vibration, not the law of attraction. And so it is in that energy where I became a, a writer, speaker, teacher about that and to help people understand that space. And as I moved through that energy, I got my level one Reiki certification. Oh, wait, no, nope, back up. I got my uh, psychic mediumship uh, certification because I knew I was always intuitive but it was something more there so I, I developed those energies and then as i moved through my psychic mediumship went into reiki to learn about energy healing and from there what i'm most proud of and what i love the most right now in my life is the lamoilian energy work that i do which transcends uh the reiki work which transcends everything else that i've done in the past it's a, it's a myriad uh, a combination of everything that, I, that I've learned to be of service to humanity. So it brings me great joy to, to uh, be of service to help people alleviate their suffering, their pains, their anxieties, to let go of the baggage of trauma, to let go of the baggage of emotional hurt and pain, to allow them to step into the fullness of their true self. Beautiful. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. And I think um, my giant journey of awakening kind of was Reiki related as well in, in having a, a session from somebody 
Um, and to me, when you receive the attunements, it kind of opens you up so that you can bring this energy in. Yeah. You do it for like channeling that healing energy or as, as, as you two do as well in, in terms of kind of mediumship or, or whatever word you might, you might use for that. But it seems to just open you up and then all these other doors just start opening. Um, and I think a lot of it is tapping into our, our memories too. And, and even if it's not our personal memories, but the memories that are out there that we can tap into of places like Lemuria or Atlantis or, you know, other with our multidimensional aspects as well, tapping into energies that are not from these parts. They're not from around here, um, but those galactic energies as well. So, yeah. Interesting. Thank you. I love what I do. <laughs> now, one question that I'm starting to ask people about, and I'll ask it now to make sure that I don't forget. Um, so I started working with angels and ascended masters probably before I connected with the fairy realm. And it seemed an easier pathway into me. It was almost fairies were still a little bit on that I'm not sure about those I found it easier to to trust in and, and feel the energy of angels um, but my Reiki master was she'd been a teacher she was very professional looking and she would talk about fairies and just mention them in passing like it was completely normal so I kind of opened my heart to the idea of working with fairies as well and I have done since then and dragons and, and unicorns um, and not everyone connects with these realms, but I wanted to ask both of you and whoever wants to, to start first. Of your experiences connecting in with, with the realm of the Fae in its broadest, broadest terms, if you have, first of all, if that resonates with you, how that kind of feels to you or how you work with that energy and any experiences that you would like to um, share on that. After you, Hillis, I think my answer is going to be shorter than yours, my friend. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's interesting uh, in terms of the elemental energies. You know, I am aware of fairies, gnomes, uh, all of the creatures of the forest. Uh, but there's one particular that I'm fond of, and it is uh, the dragon. You know, since I was born the year of the fire dragon, it is uh, near and dear to my heart uh, with the dragon energy and the dragon ley lines across the planet. And my experience with dragons have not been uh, in great depth, but it is one that I'm aware of. And actually I do have a dragon that I do work with sometimes. And it is uh, more of a wise energy. And sometimes it's that extra boost or the extra kick as if I need it. Um, because uh, the reverence of this dragon energy or dragon energy in general is one that is, um, as, as I am seeing this, is old or if not older than um, the whale energy, the sperm whale or the blue whales that are on the planet and how much energy and information that they hold. And so as I I am now literally coming into awareness uh, on the air with you now, because I had no idea that was going to come through. It's just uh, how to tap into that galactic energy and just uh, um, in comparison that, you know, the blue whales, sperm whales are connected to more earth energy and the dragons are more connected to galactic or universal energy. So that's what I just received. And so, I'm happy to, to work with this as much as we move more in uh, the beautiful energies that are emerging on the planet now. Yeah. Lou? Groovy. Um, thank you. Um, well, I'm, uh, what can I say? For me, I'm glad you mentioned the whales because actually it's the dolphins that I feel the deepest affinity with uh, among all the animal beings of the planet. And that's been true my entire life. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, 
growing up when I did, uh, there was a film called Day of the Dolphin. We had a, a TV series when I was a kid called Flipper uh, about a dolphin, right? Um, I mean, these things were kind of like out there and you could go, oh, okay. Um, and I, I, one time I was um, really struggling as, uh, as we all do. And I was in Venice Beach and I was asking the universe for help. And I got guided to walk on the beach and uh, true story about a dozen dolphins rode up on the beach and, and beach themselves there in front of me. Uh, I don't remember when this was, but it, it, this literally happened. I said, oh, I'm just so pissed off. I'm so disappointed. I'm so angry. And I'm getting from them. No, 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 no. You're not getting it. You're not getting it. So I said, what, 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 what shall I say? I love myself. All right. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. They started beating their fins on the water. Uh, you know, but that, yes, that was it. That was, that was what we want you to do. Yes. So that happened. Uh, my hand to God, that happened. And then another time I was uh, on a little boat off um, um, Santa Barbara and uh, to uh, the Santa Barbara Islands uh, in a little tuna boat with some friends just uh, taking a cruise. And on the trip back from the islands, we ran into thousands of dolphins in the water, uh, in, a, in a pod, in a pool, in a, in a connection, you know, all there, all there together. So that that uh, was also an extraordinary thing. But so, uh, you know, I, I, I know that the fairies are real. I know that these other realms are, are real. What actually has been calling me uh, being Virgo, I'm very earth connected and earthy. And uh, one of my ebooks is called um, uh, the Earth Heart Journal, E-A-R-T-H-H-E-A-R-T. -E the earth is the heart and the earth is in our heart and our heart is in the earth and it's all about love. Um, so for me, I've actually been talking to the elementals over the last several months and praying to Mother Earth and doing it quite intentionally and deliberately uh, in terms of trying to connect. But you're absolutely right. I mean, Ireland is, of course, uh, famous uh, for uh, leprechauns, fairies, uh, etc. And uh, what, what has been my uh, joy here uh, in the time I've been here is... Um, learning about the Celtic mythology, the calendars, uh, the goddesses, the gods, uh, the, the Breton law, um, the, the, the kings, uh, you know, all of that kind of thing, which is much more, you know, in alignment with uh, the, the, the other dimensions and the earth as a, as a spiritual being uh, alive and conscious and all of that. So that, that's, that's where I stand with all of that so far. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come take a trip because no, uh, I am have Welsh descent or I Irish energy in in within this makeup. Good. Because my dad's last name is Kennedy, so that's not a giveaway. Yeah, yeah, and that's then, pretty Irish. Yeah, and then my last name is Pew P G H, which is a Welsh name. So it's like I have to come visit sometime uh -huh. and. And so it's going to happen. Good. Good. Come on anytime. Yeah, you're very welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you both for those answers. Um, and I resonate with, with what both of you have said. And it's interesting that the whales came into the conversation about the dragons, because to me, they often do. It often, and I'm like, how, how are the whales and the dragons connected? And I don't know the, you know, the, the full details of that, but I, I very much feel that they are um, and that there are galactic whales too. Um, and my feeling with the dragons is that anybody who does grid work, anybody that works with the energy of the land is working with dragons, whether or not they know that. Um, and my feeling is, is that, yeah, they're, they're some of the original beings way way before humans were on the scene um and i had i had a lot of connection when i was living in australia the whales the um, humpbacks used to come into the bay and they'd come pretty close to the, you know just behind the first wave as that was starting to break like really quite close to shore and they'd bring they'd go up north have their calves and then bring their calves in and be teaching the calves, you know, the tail splashing and the, the fin splashing and just rolling with, with, their, with their calves gently. Um, Beautiful. 
and I, when light language first started coming through to me, I felt the involvement of the whales in that. And there was one day when I was doing a big activation. It was the biggest one that I'd done. And it was what I could see out to sea was a pyramid deep in the, deep in the ocean bed. And the work that I was doing was lifting this pyramid up. It was like activating this pyramid. And as it was rising, I realized that it was an octahedron. It wasn't a pyramid. Um, and it was a drizzly day and I was at the back of the beach and I was getting a bit wet and I was a bit grumpy. And I was like, can I, can I go now? Like, I'm, I feel like I'm <laughs> done. And at that point, two, two dolphins jumped out vertically like that. And I've seen dolphins, you know, coming in and surfing, surfing the waves. And I know they'll do that, but I'd never before or since see them do that. And the timing of it was just as I was like, can I go inside now, please? And, they, and I was kind of like, if you want me to stay, then let me know. <laughs> <laughs> these two dolphins Hello. <laughs> yeah that was really cool it was amazing and because of the rain nobody walked in front of me all the time that I was doing the activation like nobody went into that field of energy either so yeah it was all all perfectly aligned so and I resonate probably more with the with the energy the whales and the dolphins but I I love dolphins like Dolphins, really. So, Lou, you had a massive, um, I can't remember if it was this year, just gone, or if it was the year before, but you had a huge initiation. Yes. How, so... <laughs> last year, last Christmas. So just over a year ago. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a house fire, which uh, in about two or three hours destroyed... Uh, the, la the everything I'd collected and put together the previous 13 years of my life and uh, ended my uh, warm and fuzzy relationship with my, my housemate that I've been renting from. And uh, the house has been rebuilt. Uh, my room's been rebuilt and the house has been re redone. And uh, he's, he's on his path, I'm on mine, and we're still friendly. But yeah, it was a big kick in the ass, frankly, and it was not what I was... Uh, hoping for or asking for consciously, but the initiation part of it, of course, is, um, you know, really learning. Uh, and, and this is, um, you know, to see the blessing in every challenging situation. Uh, I think that really is so key, you know, for all of us who have these gifts and abilities uh, and blessings to be connected to spirit you know, is um, to know that there is always a, a blessing in every in every challenge. And, you know, it requires um, healing and forgiveness and uh, taking responsibility and cleaning up uh, confusing things or fearful things or, or judgmental things that I'm, I was holding in my heart consciously or unconsciously. And yeah, it was quite a process of, uh, of death and rebirth. And I'm grateful for it at this point, you know. And you were in the room when it when the fire started as well. Um, so I lived there for 13 years. I had a fireplace, and I did what I had done literally about a thousand times before, which is light the fire, go downstairs, make my dinner, uh, as an American says, tea, as the Irish and the English say, and um, came up, and half the room was on fire, and that was it. Yeah, so. Yeah. So what I want to say, really, since we're talking about this is and then what happened is I was really flooded with love and support and kindness, um, you know, for being on the path and whatever I'd offered over the previous number of years to people who I'd been able to help. And, uh, you know, they they returned that kindness a hundredfold. And uh, even including the landlord uh, of the flat that I'm living in has been extremely generous, patient, etc. And I've had uh, support from friends in the States and friends here, etc. So um, it hasn't by any stretch been seamless. And it certainly wasn't anything like what I thought it might be when it all started. But um, I'm, uh, again, very grateful and um, very conscious that this this year, particularly that we're moving into now, I think everything that's happened for all of us are on the path. Uh, you know, especially for myself, has been preparation for these huge energetic shifts that we're beginning to uh, 
to step into. And I really do believe humanity is about to enter its dark night of the soul uh, that all of us have had to go through many times in order to learn how to um, ask for help and, and uh, be vulnerable and take responsibility and forgive ourselves and forgive each other and, and be very human in our spiritual path. Yeah, that's huge. What a what a reset. <laughs> Gets your attention. Yeah. <laughs> you know, go ahead, yes, go ahead Hillis. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you, you mentioned about the collective dark night of the soul. Because, you know, as most of us know individually as light workers, as healers, and the whole spectrum of us. You know, we have had these experiences, you know, not once, but many times, you know, just when you think you're done, it's like, oh, wait, no, nope, here it is again. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And so now, uh, collectively, what I have come to know is as we are now moving out of uh, 3D energy, we are moving into this 4D energy, and which baffles me because no one really talks about what 4D energy is. You know, people are ramping up and, and want to get into that 5D space, but it's the 4D energy where the transition is done, where the openings happen. And so as we allow ourselves to take the time to honor that, this 4D energy, the shedding of the old, the releasing of the old, uh, whether it's an uh, old belief system or old habits or old relationships or dynamics, anything that no that is uh, no longer of service, it is now time for it to be shed as we move now into this unifying of this 4D energy. You know, I know that people are, you know, worried and concerned and filled with anxiety because of world events and world happenings. But as we put our attention on that, yeah, we still want to move into this 5D energy of unconditional love. We have to release the fear and anxiety and the attention on that. I mean, whether if it's, oh, I want to hurry up. I want this to be hurry up and done with. Oh, I'm tired of this. Oh, so, you know, even though the words or the thoughts may have good intentions behind them, but it's still that focus of the energy on it that still fuels the the intentions or the manifesta manifestations or even slows down the process of us getting to where we have to go as a collective. Beautiful. Yeah. Amen. That leads me on nicely because this is something I wanted to ask you both. Um, if you feel fear coming in and, you know, maybe you don't. And I would have said up until two years ago that I didn't so much. I used to be very fearful of so many, so many things like as a child and and a younger adult, you know, I was scared of the dark. I was scared of, of so much. So you know, the last few years have, have really, I've spent a lot of, a lot of time and, and really working on fears. Um, but it's stepping in sometimes. And especially, especially in, in more recent times. So what do you do if you feel that coming in? Like, how do you manage that for yourselves? You know, the, thank you for that question, Denise. That's a really interesting question. And like you, I probably would have answered it differently a year ago, even let alone two years ago, as a to now. And, you know, the energy of fear, you know, people have all these different acronyms for it, you know. Uh, and there's one that I love, but it's escaping me right now. Uh, but it's always something, something, something to be ready. And so the energy of fear itself is the energy of lack, the energy of not knowing, the energy of being lesser than. And so it is the fear of something greater, or something greater to come. And so what I have learned to do is to embrace that fear to really sit with it to understand why am i afraid of this why am i afraid of you know jumping out of an airplane you know <laughs> why am i afraid to to you know 
advertise myself or why am I afraid to do, you know, to be seen or why am I so so it's all these these unknowns, you know, all these different variables. And so to sit with it, to honor that feeling is pretty much how I deal with it. And and yeah, so, you know, I still have fears at times, you know. And, and sometimes, you know, an old fear evolves into something else. And so it's that space of evolution because as I grow, certain aspects of the old to, uh, I guess, kind of keep me in that old mindset, that old mind game. It's like, well, we're, you're not afraid? Well, we're going to teach you to be afraid or, or show you how you can be even more afraid. And so I'm like, what are you talking about? And so it, it, it so it's not necessarily conquering anything. It's just really having a depth of understanding it. It's like, okay, I understand. I get why you're doing this. I understand why you're pushing me. I, I get it. And so it is in that space of respect of, of that energy of fear, having the respect to always being in a space of being ready to understand what it is, to know what it is, to have a relationship with it. Because that, to me, that's what it, what it comes down to, is having a relationship with all forms of energy, you know, no matter where it arrives on the spectrum. And that way, once you have a relationship with that energy, you then can understand it and then have the ability to transmute that energy into uh, something that serves you. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, brilliant, man. Love it. Um, you. You're welcome, brother. Well, um, you know, uh, face everything and rise is the one that comes to mind, uh, you know, uh, and yeah, we're all going to have fear and it's going to come, uh, you know, and go and come and go the, you know, uh, feel the fear and do it anyway, you know, is right is courage and and, uh, you know, the um, let go into the mystery. Uh, you know, reach into the darkness, uh, you know, give the situation to God for God's purpose. You know, that's what I strive to remember. Uh, you know, Michael Beckwith, who we both mentioned here, who's been such a huge inspiration to, to many people, and especially in the States, um, you know, uh, to me, what I learned many things from him, one thing I learned is he was always reflecting back to people what they were willing to see about themselves. People would say, oh, Reverend Michael, you're amazing and you've given me so much. And you always say, Yo, you're seeing what's in you in me, you know, and now own it in yourself. And, um, you know, we mentioned some, some great teachers there, Hillis, uh, Neil Donald Walsh, Greg Braden, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and Marianne Williamson, um, uh, Byron Katie, um, uh, Lynn McTaggart, uh, Lynn Andrews was another one I got to hang out with, a uh, brilliant, brilliant spiritual woman, yeah. I mean, there are so many uh, wonderful teachers in the world right now, you know, and we've uh, grown with all of them. And, um, uh, you know, what I'm saying here is that we have the ability, we're more than we imagine ourselves to be. This is the theme from my guides, you know. And I love what you're saying about 3D, 4D, 5D, I, you know, that's where my head is at uh, as well, that, you know, we're, uh, we've been on one path, all the indigenous cultures say this, you know, we're in a new sun, a new time, a new age, a new calendar, all this kind of thing, especially this year. Um, so, you know, it's going to take courage for sure. And, and, you know, to me, it's knowing that the help is available. You know, like the dolphins jumped out of the water for you, Denise, and no one ever stood between you and your your energy work, etc. Um, we've all got a dozen of these stories, you know, because as kids, as teenagers, as adults, as as you know, maturing people in the world, spirit has had to get our attention, like with me and the fire, over and over again. Do you understand? Do you get it? Do you know that you are safe, loved, and supported? and that you can ask for and give thanks and receive help. Yeah, you know, and then I'll forget, you know, again, certainly, you know, oh, this drama, no, this I have to figure out on my own, you know. So it's it's um, practice, patience, and persistence uh, to know that we're safe, loved, and supported. And what I also want to say here, my friends, is, you know, the energy with both of you is just, just a feast, you know. It's just hanging out in the heart space, as Krishnadas says, and, you know, thank you. 
Um, and it's because of all the inner work that we've done, you know, the daily devotional practice of meditation and prayer and energy work and journaling and whatever we do every day, you know, to keep uh, clearing away the confusion, clearing away the clutter, clearing away the attachment. And, uh, you know, I think that's that peace, that, that peace of mind and that peace of heart that gives us that centering so that we can, you know, step back from the drama and get re-centered and re-grounded and then wait for the inspiration and the ideas and the answers to come. That's that's my discipline with all of that. May I add something really quick, Denise? Of course. Because, Lou, what you just said, I honor that so much and it really Thank you, inspired brother. and, and touched uh, me to express uh, one of my one of my most recent lessons uh, from an ascended master, uh, Buddha, and how he always talks about attachment and how uh, suffering is from attachment. And it wasn't until uh, recently that I discovered the true meaning of this, you know, as my uh, personal situations have evolved and changed and grown, it is, you know, what is it that I'm truly attached to? And so it was in this space of meditation to really understand that the suffering that I've allowed for me to endure is because of my attachment to uh, survival, my attachment to having things a certain way or, or having this or having that. And, and, and it's not, you know, it's beyond material because I mean, that can be replaced even though there's a significant attachment in the collective to material possessions, which nothing is wrong with by any means. It's just that we've been conditioned and programmed to such a degree have that. But the real suffering is the attachment to the ideology, the the ways in which we are grounded into what we do, grounded into our belief system, grounded into our thoughts, and, and grounded into our cultural uh, norms, and to our ethnic upbringings, and, and all these things that we've grown attached to that creates this space of self-identification or cultural identification. And that is uh, the root of this attached suffering. So I'm glad that you mentioned that because, you know, as I'm moving through this new definition of releasing this uh, attachment to, to what was that no longer what is. And so it's like, what is important or what is value or what is this now? What, and how has it changed? And, and all these new dynamics, it, it's, it's, as we just talked about, it, it's uh, frightening to a degree, but it's also comforting to know, it also brings excitement because it's something new or something different. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, Brilliant. I love what both of you have said on that. It's, it's awesome and, and to bring in so much around it as well um because there's there's almost been you know there's been this idea that if you're in your heart space you can't be in the space of fear um and therefore if you're feeling fear you, you're not in your heart space which is probably true and i don't know most of us are not continually in our heart space <laughs> You know, we're there and then we were like oh I'm judging again here I am yeah um and I, I loved what came up as well about really feeling into it you know really feeling into that fear and digging a bit deeper instead of just trying to get rid of it like oh this isn't you know I'm a spiritual being I can't be in that space of fear it's really you know the past couple of years have really changed my perception of that, um, of, of that whole, that whole spectrum. Um, and speaking of, of that spectrum, often one way you can like shift it to excitement as well. You know, excitement is kind of like the fear, but without the cortisol, it's without the damaging effects. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it shifts it completely. Yeah, yeah. That breath work wow. as well to me has, has been incredible. Sure, sure. So, 
One second. So yes, Denise, I, uh, sorry, Hillis, I just wanted to underline that. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, uh, you know, so Van Morrison has the song Let Go Into the Mystery, you know, and when we're talking about creativity now, and, and Hillis does his beautiful design, which he's in front of uh, quite, quite gorgeous. And so he's sharing his talents with us. I do music and poetry and, and uh, that keeps me sane. You know, uh, you do your. I do us. I actually do poetry as well. Yes, of course, of course. So that's that's falling in love with the mystery is is all I want to bring to the, the conversation. You know that we know uh, the more healthy we are, to my mind, the more creative we are. And you know we're inherently creative. Every human being is inherently creative. John Lennon said, "Every child is born a genius," and society beats it out of them, basically. You know. Uh, right. So, so if we're creative and we're creating and we're uh, being in that headspace, you know, the divine feminine, the right brain, receptive, intuitive, uh, you know, inspired is what I'm reaching for. Then that is raising our vibration, you know. And to me, that actually is the the energy of the fifth dimension as I understand it. You know, when we talk about heaven on earth, uh, you know, and transcending these illusions of separation, as Spirit puts it. When I'm singing, when I'm doing channeling, when I'm doing poetry, I'm not, I'm not in the way, you know, I'm completely surrendered, you know, and to me, that's, that is the, the healing of those fears, those inadequacies, those self doubts and self judgments, etc. And it's empowering and inspiring. And it's, it's, it's helping us to be prepared for the unknown and see the unknown as an opportunity and not just as a threat. Beautiful. I love that. Beautiful. And and so connecting to what you just eloquently presented, Lou, and, and what you just said, Denise, about, you know, you can't be in fear and in the heart space at the same time. It's interesting because as you were saying that, I'm like, it's possible. You can be in fear and in your heart at the same time. Because if you are allowing yourself to embrace what is unknown, allowing yourself to embrace that what is coming, you're opening yourself up to that new door, to that new adventure, to that new energy stream, and it is in your heart because it is that courage that you allow that stream of energy to come through. But it's okay to have that fear because, you know, in the human experience, you know, it is, it is in that vein to know that we are human. You know, and, and most of us, you know, especially when I teach about uh, the law of vibration, you know, I often teach about how fear is the, the lowest and most dense of all the emotions, all the emotional spectrum, and love is the highest. And so when you're in that, that the lower dense density field of energy, you are connected to a primal part of yourself. You're connected to that... Uh, to that Neanderthal DNA, uh, you know, that, that old ancient energy. So it's like, okay, you know, if I play with fire, I'm going to get burned at some point and I will get burned, but I'm just going to keep doing it because it brings me joy. But yet there's still this underlying fear in anything that we do, whether if it brings us joy, happiness, peace, whatever, there's still the underlying fear of losing something. There's still this underlying fear of whatever it may be. And yes, you know, I've talked about uh, fear in the past of how it holds us back. But now, as I see it, fear is also what makes us human to have this complete human experience. Sure. Beautiful. We can live in both. Yeah, yeah. We, we need both. We need that contrast, don't we? We need cold yeah. to know hot, and we need dark to know light, and hungry to know full, and all of that. It's, it's you know, I love what you're saying, Hillis. Uh, it's, you know, it's not settling, I think, is the thing, you know, yeah. being not compromising with ourselves, you know, which, which again, takes great honesty and humility and integrity and courage, all of which will come and go, come and go, come and go, you know, based on the situation, etc. But again, I want to say if we, you know, if we know that we're a spiritual being having a human experience, which is the way I like to put it, uh, you know, then we uh, are wise to ask for help and guidance and inspiration and healing every day. And yeah. uh, absolutely in my life this last year, since the fire, for sure, it was like, Lou, 
you you talk a good game, my friend. You know, now it's time to really like dig in all the way, you know. Yeah. And that's what this year has given me. And uh that's where the miracles come from for sure. You know, it's interesting too, because I'm sitting here being reminded of, of two things. Uh last night I was I had nothing to watch on TV. It's like, what can I watch? What can, what can I watch? I ended up watching one of my favorite movies, superhero movie, The Watchmen, one of my favorites. I know it. And um, then as I'm sitting here, you know, just so we have uh, a context, uh, so what brought to my mind the movie Lucy. And so you have Dr. Manhattan and you have uh, Scarlett Johansson playing, I forget what her character's name is, but they both have what we will call omnipotent powers, you know, powers of the mind where they could, you know, capable of just about doing anything that they put their mind and intention to. But you have what they call, or what they call their, their attachment or their token or to uh, humanity, meaning the person they were seeing. You know, in uh, The Watchmen, Dr. Manhattan was dating, dating uh, Silk Spectre. And Scarlett Johansson had the police officer. And so for their reminders of, of them having these godlike abilities, they needed that attachment, that tether to uh, this 3D reality. And so that's, you know, just in contact, that's what this fear is. You know, we can go off and do great and wondrous things, but it is that attachment that is that we have to have to remind us of our purpose, remind us of our humanity, remind us of who and what we are here to do. And so there's nothing, you know, in, in that space. And as I as I sit here and I think about this, so yes, attachment is suffering, attachment is suffering, but what am I attached to? Am I attached to the fear? Of, of 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 being greater than what I am? Am I attached to this or am I attached to that? What in this vein of energy to, uh, that I'm attached to for this reminder? What is this that is bringing up this moment to remind me of the greatness that I am, but yet realizing that my duty is to uh, humanity to remind them of their greatness as well, for them to rise up to meet me where I'm at, you know? Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. I'm going to have to watch this again on replay. This is a good <laughs> stuff. Good. Well, I loved Watchmen. I had a friend that turned me on to the comic when they were coming out. We'd wait each month to uh, to read it back in the bookstore days, and the film was was really great. But also what you reminded me, just very briefly, Denise, is uh, you know all the, um, the Marvel Comics films, which I think are extremely spiritual and metaphysical. And, uh, you know, uh, I think they may have turned the corner there on all of that, but that that whole run there up until, uh, you know, Endgame was uh, something else, you know, it was really powerful teaching for a lot of people. So I just want to put that out there. Don't get me started on that stuff. I will chat sometime. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to chat. That was a beautiful exploration, both of you. Thank you. That's That was awesome lead-ons from from that initial question. Thank you both. Certainly. Sure. I, I would love for us to, if you both have time, we're gonna go a little over time, but I normally go a little bit over, over the hour. Um, I'd love for us to just bring a little process in, you know, a little a little bit of meditation, anything that that um, is wishing to come through for people at this time. Sure. Um, I'll hand over to you first, Lou, and then over to you, Helen. Ruby, let me turn off the light. Oh. Great. Okay, so Hillis is already on it. Go ahead and close your eyes, turn within, take a deep breath. All right, God bless you, dear friends. Here we come one more time. Imagine seven stars spiral down through time and space, touch the crown, take a lovely deep breath and relax and release, relax and release. Let the energy flow down the seven chakra centers, crown, third eye, throat and heart. Take another good breath. And down we go, will center through the tummy, the sacral, the root, hips, legs, feet, down, down, down into Mother Earth. Take another beautiful cleansing breath. Relax and release, 
relax and release. God bless you, dear friends. Well, we just want to add a thought or two here, and then we might uh, let uh, our dear brother here do his uh, his uh, share his gifts, uh, which will take you even deeper, dear friends. God bless you. Dear friends, this is an auspicious moment for humanity, and you know it in your heart of hearts. And often the question is, am I really ready for uh, such a powerful time? Am I really ready to live my, to shine my light and share my love, dear friends? And spirit here, the higher self, soul, and spirit here, dear friends, of all of you wants to reassure you, you're more ready than you know. And why that is, is because you've learned to ask for help. You've learned to be open and receptive, to be vulnerable in your heart of hearts, to let the truth touch you and let love heal you, dear friends, and let uh, the pain and the fear and the struggle and the worries be washed away, dear friends, over and over again, lifetime after lifetime. Dear friends, humanity is a spiritual being having a human experience collectively and individually. And yet humanity has forgotten that for a very long time. So now you're going through what we call a planetary healing crisis, a kind of a nervous breakdown of the consciousness of humanity, seeking everywhere but where the answers are to come into a place of healing. What we do believe and we do foresee here, dear friends, in this new year of 2022, healing and healers, the true form of healing and healers, that which really heals, which really brings you back to the love and light of all that is, is going to be more valued and more sought out and more appreciated and more respected, dear friends, than it has ever been in this uh, human history. So dear friends, everyone listening here today is on that leading edge of thought, on that uh, an ambassador from the future, dear friends, a visionary, a way shower, uh, a map maker, dear friends, a dream weaver. And it is in your great heart that you are seeking and searching and finding, dear friends, opportunities to be new, to be different, to be more than you've been, dear friends. So comparing and competing with old ideas and old identities you've touched on here so beautifully today, that is letting go, dear friends. And what is needed and wanted are those who are willing to follow their hearts, dear friends, surely so, and to follow your dreams. This is a year and a time for dreaming new dreams, dear friends, B big, powerful, beautiful dreams for yourself, for your loved ones, for Mother Earth and with Mother Earth, the fairies, the angels, all the beings of light in this world and beyond, dear ones, and for humanity, absolutely. So dear friends, with your courage, with your compassion, and with your wisdom, you bring the love and light of all that is in through and as your very soul and spirit, your life, into this time and space. Take a deep breath. And let us fill you up and let your cup overflow and let yourself remember, realize, understand, and know that you're ready for the unknown as we call you forth into a time of love and light, of joy and freedom, of happiness and healing and true fulfillment. Dear friends, be at peace. All is infinitely well for you and your world. We love you so. Peace and blessings. Namaste. Beautiful souls, everyone who is present, physically, now physically, as we stay in this energy stream, of all chakras being open and active from your soul star, which is just above your head, all the way down to the bottoms of your feet, your earth star chakra, keeping you grounded and connected to this divine, beautiful energy. Just taking a deep breath here and allow yourself to connect, to ascend into the space of connectivity of self, and as you connect to self, you connect to your neighbor, you connect to your family, you connect to your friends, you connect to all humanity as we all are one. And as this connection is established, 
we allow ourselves to move into the space of the vault of wisdom, the halls of knowledge that are contained within you, guide you in the activation and the knowing of self, the knowing of this energy that is contained in each and every single cell in the body, all trillion cells containing a particular specific piece of wisdom and knowledge you are seeking, information for yourself, information to share with others, and allow this divine wisdom, this guiding light, this light that is you, this light that is of you, this light that is from you, this light that is connected to you, allow this stream to flow infinitely with ease, with grace, and endlessly to all that you are, to all that your being is, activating this beautiful energy of wisdom and information, allowing you to ascend into new heights and new definitions, <laughs> new definitions of your being, new definitions of you, allowing the old programming, allowing the old beliefs, all the trauma to allow it to fall away as it no longer serves you, as it no longer is you, because as we are in this new energy of Aquarian, we are now allowing this newness to emerge, to evolve, to grow, as we now choose to participate in personal and collective evolution, because as one grows, as one evolves, so does the other. Let's take a deep breath in this moment. And just allow the evolution of self to be one of ease and of allowing and allow you to know yourself through all that you have experienced in this human form. Know that there is greater within in the energy form, in the mental form, in the emotional space, to allow all that you are, the wholeness, the completeness that you are, to be fully realized in your true authentic self. And with this, you become to know truly who you are, the true self, and honor that self. And no large or small task, no matter the size, you honor that feeling, you honor that truth. And with the honoring of this wisdom, you are who you are supposed to be, where you are supposed to be. Honoring that in which you are. And keep honoring yourselves, brothers and sisters and loved ones and masters as they are here, we are here to help each other. You can just take a deep breath and allow yourself to come back to the space. Open your eyes and stretch if you need to. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful, thank you both. So just to close, what are you both up to? Is there, um, Hilis, I know that you've got a beautiful um, activation that you are offering at the moment. <laughs> yes, and so this is my newest baby I'm so excited about and so proud that I was given this gift to share with everyone. So this is a Lemoyan light uh, activation. So, excuse me, a Lemoyan light body activation. And so this particular light body activation is where I start off expressing uh, the tools that are used to assist this activation uh, from crystals and other little technology devices. And the purpose of this activation is to activate the cells 
the dormant DNA or what some people call dump DNA in the body for us to ascend individually and as a collective. And this uh, particular light body activation is about 38, 40 minutes long. Um, and I give clear instructions during this process. Uh, it's a meditation you can do uh, at home anytime. It is available on my website for purchase. And it's probably going to be uh, one of the best investments that you make for yourself uh, this year as we ascend and move into and through 4D and up into 5D energies. Beautiful. Thank you. And it is, um, I received the activation and it is a really beautiful, strong activation. So thank you for that. And those crystals, I didn't, I don't think I knew any of those crystals that you had. <laughs> You know, most people know and, and see a little, a little known but unknown secrets. I'm the crystal whore. I have hundreds of crystals. And, and some of my favorites now are the Andara crystals. I love Andara crystals because they were some of the first beings on the planet. And so they have that primal earth energy, that, that, that key wisdom. And so between the Andaras and the Lemurian crystals I work with, it's, and, I, and I'm so honored, Denise, that you actually have the opportunity to uh, experience that. So thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. And all your all your details, um, I've I've put everything that you gave me in the in the script for this in the in the post, um, so they can connect to that through either of the links that are there. Thank you, Lou. Over to you. What's what's going on in your world? Sure. Bless you. Well, um, that was lovely, by the way, uh, Hillis. Thank you for your your channeling, brother. That was gorgeous. Thank you so much. Yes, and, and thank you to you too as well, Lou, for that lead in and, and us connecting our energies, the bridge of energies. Ah, oh, magic. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll have to keep in touch here. Uh, yeah, love to love to stay connected. Absolutely. Um, so I do uh, a live uh, uh, one hour uh, program every morning, as you know, Denise was on, I think yesterday or the day before, uh, called Morning Prayers, where I read uh, my own and other people's channeling and poetry and, and anything that crosses my path in the, in the previous day. And uh, that's, we do that for, uh, from 9 to 10 a.m. Uh, Monday through Thursday. And then that's there, you know, for the rest of the day, what have you. And then I'm also doing, uh, I do interviews uh, on uh, my YouTube channel and my uh, started a podcast called Awaken Spirits Network. Uh, so that's on YouTube and Spotify. And then um, I'm working on my music quite a lot these days. As I said, that was uh, uh, the gift of the fire is getting back into my music. And I've just had so many miracles and blessings. People giving me guitars, keep people giving me better guitars. Uh, you know, uh, this kind of thing. Uh, so um, uh, I did a concert for New Year's uh, Day, uh, Saturday night. That's still on my page. And um, I'm really happy with that. So I'm working on an album of, of my own and other people's uh, music. And um, uh, I do uh, have a few ebooks in the pipeline as well. And so I'm working on that. You might know Ali Ray. She and I are also uh, starting a podcast together, and we're beginning that this week at the end of the week as well. And um, so, lots of uh, lots of nice opportunities and possibilities. My 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 passion is to do sessions with people as well, uh, one to one channeled readings and and uh, spiritual counseling and all of that. So that's my that's my thing. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful, and thank you both. This has been. This has been really lovely. And obviously I didn't know how, how this would work. You two have never, never met before, but it, I'm really glad I followed the, the guidance. And it, it does feel a really beautiful connection that you two had. Yeah. Um, and the, the channeling that you both did, that meditation was just beautiful. It was, it was really beautiful. So thank you both thank so you. much as well. Yeah. For the comments. Well, and thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the courage to trust your inspiration. Denise, yeah, there you are, courage, trusting your inspiration, and uh, introducing me to this this lovely brother and uh, your good self to reconnect with the two of us as well. So it's been a joy. Thank you both. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. I mean, it's <laughs> all I can say, you know, but it, 
<laughs> and thank you also to everybody who's been who's been with us on the live and who's going to watch this on the replay on on youtube um my youtube channel as well i'll just mention that because i'm really trying to get i'm trying to get that going a bit more um i'd love to get up to the a thousand and, and have the options of the community on there and at this rate it's going to take me another six years because it's been steadfastly a hundred a year since the first of the first. I have, I have a feeling things are about to pick up for all of us, my friend. Yeah, yeah. I think so. And I've got lots of yeah. ideas of things I want to <laughs> what I want to do as well. So um in the piece with Denise is is my YouTube as well. So if right. this is um if you've enjoyed this, there's there's the Love Speaks Love playlist and, and lots more. So thank you everybody. This has been really, really beautiful. Thank you, dear brothers. Thank um, you very much. Thank you and stop the live stream. Thank you, everybody. And...